Thank you, guys. So, uh, my name is Tadas from the court. Uh, as, as, uh, it's a big honor for me to, to be here and actually talk to you guys about Jakobsen because I'm, I'm really interested in him and I think he's amazing. And I think that he, whatever, that the work that he was doing was really thorough and, and really representative of what um, linguistics is supposed to be about. And so I thought maybe, uh, maybe I'm supposed to like bridge somehow that, uh, the, the sort of the horizons because, because uh, in relation to whatever we, you guys, all of us were, we're talking about here, uh, uh, Lacan, Lacan is going to be uh, on the threshold of postmodernism. Uh, I'm sorry, not postmodernism, poststructuralism. Whereas this person right here, it's going to be uh, of, um, of uh, structuralism. So that's, that's uh, why is it different? Maybe I'm going to talk about this or why is it not different? Uh, maybe I'm going to mention uh, this, but I, I think that's sort of, um, it's, you got to feel as though uh, we're getting at like, nuts and bolts of the language, whereas uh, here we're, we're, we're actually dealing with the, like, sort of the, the hegemony and the discourse that is like um, mediated and, 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 and so, so that, that might be just a little bit different. And I sort, sort of wanted to start off by, by uh, say, uh, to reminding you maybe of uh, Groucho Marx's uh, joke that had to do with the person um, talking to the audience and saying that uh, uh, and, and pointing to the other person and saying that, you know, don't be, uh, so you are just thinking that this person is an idiot, but don't be mistaken because this person is indeed an idiot. So this is, I, I think it's absolutely crucial because we're going to be seeing, we, we saw what language brings about. We saw the, we saw the tri tri uh, triangle and how does, does the symbol and, and sort of the mediated and, and um, uh, desire obfuscates the whole arena, the whole, the sort of uh, heteroglossia of, 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 of desires in question. And, and, and so, so where, where we want to apply it, sort of the very logical, very empiricist um, uh, means to arrive at meaning, uh, some, something that is absolutely out of our understanding and some, something that it could be very contingent and arbitrary it can just you know, appear from nowhere and suddenly our, uh, our absolutely thorough and, 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 sort of, and, and, and rigorous means are, are totally you know, uh, debunked. So, um, so that, that's something that I'm going to be talking about uh, later, but maybe we should, we should just uh, start off by, by talking about what, uh, the background of, of uh, Roman Jakobson. So he's a, he, he was originally from, uh, from Russia, and uh, he was born actually, I just wanted uh, I don't think the dates are very important, but uh, but I, he he was born in 1896, and um, so he was born in a in a in a, in a wealthy family and 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 uh, a very intellectual one of that, and um, in 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 his childhood he, was, he already spoke two languages French and Russian, and um, and from uh, very precautiously even he started doing all these uh, very intellectual uh, things, and, and he was a very bright uh, person indeed. Um, and uh, later on, after the Russian Revolution in 1917, um, in 1920s, the sort of the political discourse became sort of uh, you know, dangerous and, and sort of convoluted. And so they had to uh, run away. And well, basically, uh, you know, formally he didn't run away, he was on a humanitarian mission and to pro Prague, but he stayed in Prague and mainly as a refugee because he had to go. And so we talk about these people, and, and if you know, if you study um, more about history, you know that that like very, in, uh, very like the most the most prodigious you know uh, people in, in, in history sometimes have their own entourage, uh, the circles. That, that's surround, that are surrounding them. For example, if you're studying uh, maybe, you know, uh, Second Viennese School, uh, Schoenberg and his, his uh, pupils, or um, maybe you could just talk about um, um, uh, B generation, for example, uh, in, in literature, where, where people are surrounding and, and creating something together. So, uh, uh, Roman Atkinson was always a person that that was uh, in the circle, or maybe the center of the circle, and you, more 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 often than not, 
he was the, the, the center of, uh, of the circle. And so he had a Moscow a linguistic circle, and then he had a, a Prague linguistic circle. And what, what was a Prague linguistic circle was basically building upon and on the on the uh, uh, on the on the on the theory of linguistic that was was delineated by Saussure. And you guys are probably familiar familiar with Saussure. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, and, and and so we th that's probably enough of the of the of the. Um, sort of uh, the background. Uh, we can talk about why the structuralism is important here, why is it, this is crucial to talk about even the structuralism. So clearly the, 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 the name implies that there's a, some sort of a structure. And why, why, why is that important? And I think, I think uh, it's important to stress that we don't really are looking for how, uh, why, why the structure works, we're looking at how the structure works, and basically that's what we—that's uh, what you guys, you know, remarkably well did with with with, with the triangle and and and, and registers of real uh, of, of imaginary and symbolic. That we were looking at the at, at, the, at the structure and, and and trying to figure it out, to just break it apart and see how does it work. And and this is something uh, that wasn't practiced all the time. I mean. Uh, Yes, you could talk about like people like Aristotle who writes his book Poetics and and Peirce's people who were talking about how how the, you know like you know uh, Francis Bacon or or Locke that, that talk about how things work in the way that they want to actually uh, create some sort of a science uh, something that you can uh, grab onto and for example like you know for example if you take Einstein's relativity you know that a person is trying to get in grips with the celestial objects, be it or, or whatever you are seeing in your life, and therefore you want to be in grips, therefore you try to um, find out how it works together. So, and, and wh 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 why is, so again, why is that important to, to when we're talking about Jacobson? Because he's, he's, he's basically coming from the, also a circle of thinkers in, in by, by fin, uh, fin du siècle, um, uh, in, in Russia, it's, it's like the, 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 the early 20th century, uh, they were called Russian formalists. And what were, that they were doing, they were talking about, about how the Russian formalists, they, they were talking about uh, how does the literature and some sort of a narrative roughens the uh, surface. What does that mean? That every, some, every single story, um, Every single narrative, or even any single uh, you know art object, has a way to postpone your arrival at the desired object. The way that we never arrive at the letter. Uh, so there's an arabesque and what they call literariness, and so there's there's a like there's just a multitude of detours, and we basically uh, we, we, you know sometimes we arrive more more often than not we do not arrive at the uh, desired object. But that's what they were interested in, and the. Yeah. How does literary narrative function as detour? Uh, like, how does it? What is our desired object when we're reading uh, a literary narrative? So, what is delayed for us, um, and, and what is the detour we are taking on? Yeah. So, so I mean, uh, that, that's 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 we. Mm, the, the name that comes to mind is that Peter Brooks, uh, he was one of the scholar, scholarly thinkers, he was, was talking about this uh, a lot and he was actually, uh, you know, consolidating the idea of, of, of every story being uh, uh, like the, the, the tour. But going back to the text that he was referring to, uh, Freud's Beyond the Pleasure Principle, uh, it's, you have to imagine, a, 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 you know, an infant, that, because that's, that's, uh, I think that's the, the, the you know, uh, means, the, the most the, the most uh, the most simple way of, of imagining it uh, the, of, of an infant trying to get in grips with the loss of his mother and 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 uh, you know gain of his mother or attainment of his mother mother and therefore he uh, he sort of creates um, a game in which he is able to throw and let go of thing and get get it back so it's it's I don't think it would be uh, very lucrative for us to sort of imagine that there's a overarching reason why 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 there's a detour i think it's more of a uh you know satisfaction in the tour that we have to do this uh i think that's that's just more of a it's, i think that's more exciting to 
thing this way, and I think it's, it holds together as, a, as, a, as an argument. So why, why, why again, why, what are we talking about? A Russian formalist is basically that, yes, we look at how uh, the narrative is roughened. Why don't we just get at the thing, the place that we want to be at? Um, but also, they don't really, they are not really interested in meaning. So that's the crucial crucial part because, for example, in a new criticism that was uh, new criticism that happened in the United States, and for example, the theory that was uh, that, that was solidified by by Wolfgang Ezer, also a very famous literary critic, they were also breaking apart into constituent units. That's what uh, has you know that's what Lacan, that's what Lacan does, and that's what uh, Jacobson does as well. But they were also that they just thought that. Well, yeah, it prolongs our arrival and sort of, uh, you, you know, postpones our our arrival. But nonetheless, we arrive and we get some sort of a, you know, eureka moment, some sort of a catharsis, you know. And so, so that's absolutely different from uh, from uh, from Russian formalists because they were not really interested at the at the you know the, the ultimate uh, meaning. So, for example, the way that. Um, uh, I, I can bound one of the Russian formulas how would they how what they would do they would look at texts like Don Coyote or or Gogol's uh, overcoat and they would see how the texture is roughened why don't we just you know get the you know lover that we want to get to and whatever why do we have to go around with Sancha Pancha and, and and just do a bunch of crazy stuff and, and you know never get the satisfaction that we ultimately need. So I think we could go go, go to the second. Um, uh, yeah, that's oh. So you could you could read that because that's that, or, or I can just read. Yes. Yeah, so, so structural man takes the real, decomposes it, and then recomposes it. And I I, I, I chose to just put it there because I, I think that the, the examples that Bart gives us is they're they're amazing, and I should, I, I just want to uh, put it out there. And, and I think that that's a very good explanation of, of how structuralism works. So basically, if, you, if you're thinking about a clashing stories or maybe many different um, uh, stories of how the genesis in our, like, sort of, how the uh, maybe religious stories about how the, the life came into being. So a person, a structuralist person like Edmund Leach did, he, they would took they would take all these stories, like for example, uh, you know, the uh, Garden of Eden and all the all the rest of the inter interpretations, and, and come up with the basic constituent units, sort of the powers that are sort of maybe the nature and the, and the celestial or the god and whatever or the, the male and the female, and these would be the units that that actually working together. And don't mind the you know schmaltzy you know the. the uh, exaggerated stuff about, you know, anything else. But these are constituent units that they're trying to deduce and get at. So, uh, in, 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 that, that is him, for example. Also, Levi Strauss, I'm not sure uh, if you guys are familiar uh, of him, but but uh, he also, he, for example, he takes, uh, Levi Strauss, he takes a uh, myth of, um, of um, that I'm, I'm gonna talk about what happens when I cannot, uh, uh, come up with the term, and actually that's very crucial with, with Jacobson. Um, uh, myth of Yap uh, Oedipus, right. So, myth of Oed Oedipus. Uh, um, Levi Strauss is, is, is uh, examining it and also is, is creating and breaking apart into constituent units, and we know that these are units that are, are crucial and, and uh, they can be interchangeable, but they're crucial, and that's why we have the story. So, for example, um, uh, Bart is, is remarkable at, at, at just looking at the, something that is probably superficial, probably a part of the kitsch, we might just consider a part of the kitsch, kitsch and, 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 and saying that this is also structuralism uh, in process. So, for example, he would lo look at, you know, design industry or, or fashion industry, and, for example, maybe somebody's selling, uh, there's an advertisement, and advertisement, and, and and, and they, they're saying that this season, um, um, the, the, the flowers, the, the flowery dress is going to be very elegant. And, and sort of, the, it's not that, that the, you know, flowers make you elegant, it's that, it's that basically, um, uh, it's that, that 
brains themselves sort of make you elegant. And they're sort of they're fusing those units together, and therefore it it it, it comes. Uh, it comes so so naturally that that you're gonna possess this this, this some sort of address and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna make you look more elegant. And also he's talking about like for example food industry how they would say, well if you need if uh, you know if if you're watching any culinary you know stuff and whatever they would say if, if they're making an advertisement for a like margarine do you say margarine margarine no. Oh. The second margarine. 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 Okay, so so I'd say they say they say you can make this souffle with margarine, the one that we are offering you. And he would say, well, that's remarkable. That margarine, I didn't even think about that. And so something that is uh, that is a part of the uh, you know cap maybe maybe and uh, maybe industry and whatever becomes so obviously you know interconnected and you get to uh, buy it tomorrow. And, and these are these are processes that are working underneath. So uh, under, underneath the, the sort of appearance of, of, of you being so being so like forthcoming in the way that you think that, that margarine is actually gonna help to improve your uh, souffle or whatever, and also he's talking about uh, boxing matches and, and he's saying uh, that's that's the interesting part because I don't like really sports but apparently Bart kind of did like sports. Uh, he he said that that what what's it's, that it's not that 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 boxing matches are are are, are violent and superficial. It's that they are intelligible, because there are two powers. There's bad and good, or maybe not even that. It's just, just two things clashing to each other. It's as simple as that. And that, that these are the units that get to be sort of obfuscated in the in the all the hodgepodge of of storytelling and whatever. That's 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 what we're talking about. And why is this important? Because well, basically, it's, I just wanted to quickly. Go to back to Freud. Uh, I mean, Freud is also the, the gen, like sort of the, the the starting point of all of this. I mean, uh, whatever the appearance is, is not the thing that we are, are you know, that's not the most important thing. We know that, that the, there are processes like uh, like id or superego and, and ego that's working together in sort of the in, in, in accordance, and 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 these processes are the things that sort of make us work and get by you know, and and. Just, just sort of consolidate our idiosyncrasies. Uh, but the difference with Freud, for example, structuralism would, would be maybe that that um, um, uh, Freud believed in a sort of a diachrony in the way that that there was a progeny, uh, that there was um, there was a there was a genesis of the killing of the father or whatever. Whereas uh, structuralism doesn't uh, doesn't really do that. Uh, so yeah, we could, we could just go to the second. Um, so uh, uh, that's that's the quote uh, that, that he uses, and I'm going to talk about what. Yeah. So um, that, that, that's from uh, Alice in Wonderland, and um, I'm going to talk about why why is this important. Um, so Jacobson uh, actually, it's, it's really interesting because his whole life was sort of magical, and I mean, in the way that it was absurd. He was basically all the time running away from like bad politics and whatever. For example, in Norway, he was running from uh, Nazis. And, and while he was running, uh, he was writing on aphasia. And that's what we're going to be talking about, and that's the article that I'm going to focus on aphasia. And aphasia is basically the inability of a patient to, to talk and express himself and sort of the impediment of, of, of speech. And that's something that I'm going to mention. Why did I forget um, Oedipus? Well, that's going to be crucial because it happens all the time to me. Because I, I just, yes, the, the simple words, the ter ter terminology that is just so distinct and so uh, segregated just, just disappears. And, uh, and that's, that's something that uh, Jacobson is talking about here. Uh, but but uh, what, what, what's important for Jacobson is basically deducing words into, well, again, constituent units, if you will, or, or basically into the most, um, ele the, the most particular and, and smallest you know, elements. So, for example, uh, he would say, and 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 that that well, there's a there's a mis well, it's just misunderstanding because because uh, it's it the the question is whether it's a pig or a fig, and 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 this is something that Jacobson is talking about in the way that that every single phoneme, that phoneme as in like consonant or a, or a, or a, a vowel. Every single this this particular element in in the language and in the words, they have some sort of a value, and it could be the binary value, it could be plus and minus or minus value, 
but it has some sort of a value. And, and a difference in a value means a difference in a meaning and difference of, of you know, of uh, realization and, and sort of attainment of any, any sort of meaning. So, um, um, yeah, I think we can, we can go to, to, to the other. Um, so, and, and, and he is, he's basically talking about, uh, in aphasia, also he's, he's mentioning um, how um, after, after uh, like some sort of, a, some sort of a disaster or maybe, a, uh, uh, or maybe somebody sick or old, they, 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 their language, language is, 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 is disintegrating. And, and he's relating that to, to uh, children, how they learn the language. So, for example, the children, while uh, g growing up, they would, uh, first of all, pick up on maybe the, the, the volume of the sound that they hear. Maybe later on they would uh, pick up on the, on the sounds and they, they would pick up whether it's a, it's a vowel or a consonant. And, 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 and then they would probably ma ma match, you know, s s fuse those things together and uh, then create like little pieces of words that are not really, you know, congruous or not intelligible, but later on they're going to be congruous and intelligible. So, so th this, is, this happens gradually, and, and Jakobson is talking about this, that, that this happens gradually. And the same happens for the people who have aphasia later on, that, that they, they, first of all, they, you know, they are grown-ups, they're mature, they can express the same, themselves fluently, and then, uh, you know, gradually the, the, the you know, uh, language is, is lost, basically. So they have words, then they just have the parts of the words, they lose consonants, they lose, they lose value, uh, you know, vowels, and ultimately there's just nothing, nothing left. And so in, in, in aphasia, uh, in the article of aphasia, he's uh, first of all he's sort of trying to uh, explain, or, or I mean something that is absolutely obvious probably for us, the event of, of uh, interlocution, maybe if you uh, want to call it that. Um, so there's supposed to be an uh, addresser, an addressee, and I think that's that's obvious because we we get stuck with people, right? Um, but but it's it's not it's not as easy as that. I'm, I'm, as, a, as an addresser, I I'm I'm shackled, and I'm not really free to talk anything I want. First of all, because there's so much gibberish that I can talk, and you're just not going to understand. I can talk in, in uh, any different language, and probably you're not going to. Uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, I can talk about invent, you know I can talk in invented language, and you're not going to understand. So, so there's a code and there's a, re a repository that, that Jacobson is talking about. That I am, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to be working in accordance with you guys, so to explain whatever I'm trying to explain. And, and, and so what it means basically, that, as, as another philosopher said, Wittgenstein, that there's no idiolect. There's no, uh, I, I, there's reasons why I would disagree with that, but, but for sake of being, you know, to, to uh, pay, pay justice to, to what, what we're talking about, this I, I, I think I agree uh, that there's no intellect that, that we cannot just talk about in our own language. There's a language is always shared, it's always public, and so so addresser is always supposed to be working in the in the sort of in the contours of, of the code. And what code is, you probably are familiar with with so sure long, if you. For example, uh, we're playing chess. You know that there's uh, there are, uh, rules. So, for example, rules are something that we get to work with, and we could just pretend that this uh, this table is uh, is a board of chess. Maybe we just like paint like little squares on it, and we'll just just you know come up with little objects, and then we'll, we will be able to play chess. So it's not really important whether whether what what objects we are using it, but as long as we have the code, the the, the rules, it, it's going to work for us. So that's that's something that uh, is very important for um, uh, for for uh, for Jakobsen, and and we could talk a, a, a tiny bit about uh, about Lacan. Uh, so it's 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 always so language why why in the same way that that for Jakobsen language is important. So for Lacan language is also important in the way that. Um, Basically, others speak through the language. I mean, that's that's the mean through, that that we have basically. Uh, the the sort of the inability and sort of maybe uh, the, the 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 way that it's in the 
inadequate the language. That's that's obviously the the sort of the the uh, you know the the flaws about language. But the language is the sort of the you know the circus in which it all happens, and it where all the all the you know symbolic stuff is going to be fun functioning, and all the all the misconceptions are going to be happening, and and other basically is going to be speaking through it, or you could say. Maybe in language, there's going to be an object for TI, something that is lacking, and that's going to be like sort of pushing us onwards and, and telling us that, that we probably might just someday in the future arrive at, and meet the person that we love, or um, you know, just just get get to the point of uh, satisfaction. Um, so yeah, so he, he makes uh, the action basically uh, talks about like the, the most simple. Uh, the the event of of, of interlocution and uh, address addresser and addressee and you just have to remember that there's no idiot. Um, I for example, if you know James Joyce, he writes Finnegan's Wake, and nobody understands it. I think it's genius, and I think that's good that nobody understands it. But nobody understands it, nonetheless. So he didn't work with code according to Jacobson. Uh, he didn't uh, take the words from repository. He he didn't. He didn't do that, and one could, one could say that he was actually experiencing that this, you know the satisfaction that is supposed to be uh, experienced. Um, uh, yeah, selection com com uh, combination. So so uh, Jacobson in the same in, this, in the same uh, uh, article on aphasia, he's talking about uh, selection and com uh, combination. So that's 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 what that's what I was mentioning and, and, and giving a reference to when I forgot the. Words edits. So, so uh, uh, for uh, uh, for aphasias, aphasias, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, for for people who are experiencing aphasia, and it's a uh, and it's a um, disorder of similarity. What happens is that uh, a person understands the context very well, and he's really he's he's, he's really put the you know he. He did put the uh, you know context under scrutiny, and he really understands it. But he cannot come up with general terms and sort of make it all, you know, make it more harmonious and sort of together. So, for example, I could talk about I was just just uh, I could talk about you know th there would be an object that I could possibly you know uh, use in order maybe not a broom because broom is like. Uh, maybe tedious. Maybe I need some so, some sort of electric object that I could just use to clean the floor. Maybe you know uh, get the dust out of that I could plug into you know the, the the outlet and maybe it would make a noise and 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 and, and, and the dogs or a pet would be afraid of it because it's it's a stupid object that makes a noise. But I just really cannot talk about and actually pronounce the word because I'm I'm really not sure what what am I talking about. But I, I know and I have this object in my head. And I and I really I can I mean I'm endogenous, endogenously um, you know I, I, I can really sympathize with the object right now I, I know what I'm talking about and probably you guys are talking about like you're probably doing a house chores and you're using this object to clean the floor but I just hope I have no idea uh, what is what is it and so what people what what happens in, in language is that we come up with these uh, super general words like thing. So I was talking about the thing, remember? So I mean that's that's something that we we do all the time. And and I when I was a kid, we used to we we came up with this Russian board that was sound stupid in our heads. So we used it all the time when we didn't know the term. And, and that that was basically the same thing. I'm not saying that we are suffering from selection disorder, but that's that's how that's how it, it comes into being. So. Um, so, for example, uh, what a person who's suffering from a similar disorder, disorder uh, instead of, uh, for example, um, um, uh, is, is instead of a knife, you would say apple, uh, pear, or bread, or bread knife. I mean, he would be fusing the words and 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 coming up with with like sort of the you know couple of, of signifiers that are just sort of. Um, for some reason uh, connected to the to the word they, they cannot pronounce. So they um, also they would use, for example, spyglass for micros mi microscope. So you couldn't say you know microscope because you just don't know the word. You would say spyglass and you would uh, do this. So 
I actually still don't know what I was the object that I was talking about. I'm, I still have maybe somebody could help me with that. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so okay, so what we talked about similarity uh, disorder. Um, and now we're gonna talk about co contiguity uh, disorder. So basically it's the same sort of thing but backwards. And what happens is that a person cannot understand uh, context. And he's just uh, totally led astray when he has to talk about context. Uh, what he's able and to do and what is at his disposal are words that just they're there. And, and if, I'm, if, I'm, if I was trying to, for example, maybe uh, describe the same object that I was, I was talking about, maybe I would just say, you know, floor, you know, dust, clean. So syntactical and sort of the, and grammatical uh, uh, laws and imperatives are totally disseminated and they're, they're obfuscated. A person is, not, is no longer able to work with them. And he's, he's just sort of like, Trump would say Mexicans. I mean, it, it doesn't. He's not gonna. There's no context. He, he doesn't even know what context means. Probably I don't know. But he's but he's a word, and 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 that's how he talks. I mean, that's how how he's able to uh, express himself. And 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 so yeah. So contiguity disorder. Uh, um, uh, so yeah, I think we can, can go for. Uh, yeah. Um, um, metonymy and metaphor. Uh, uh, there's just so many things that I could talk about this here, but I'm just gonna stay with put with with Jacobson and I'm gonna talk about the stuff that he was talking about. And, and, and he's basically talking about the way that uh, the, the the contiguity and, and and similarity disorders they have for some reason something to do with with metaphor and metonymy. So you, you couldn't say that me metaphor has to do with, for example, con contiguity disorder because uh, they both, um, the metaphor is, is talking about the substitution of, uh, of a signifier for other signifier. And, and, but, but it has, in, in the sort of, a, in, the, in the methodological sense, it has something to do with, uh, with, uh, with, um, um, with the disorders that we were talking about. And, and what, what, what he's talking about is, is basically the research that was done with kids. And for example, somebody would tell, uh, tell a kid uh, word, a, a chair, for example. And, and, and uh, just, just come up with the first word that you have in mind after I said a chair. So one would say, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe a, a stool. Or, or some, some other person would say, um, teacher brought chair or whatever. So there's a, there, there's a difference in the way that, that uh, ideas come into mind. And there's a way, it's a metonymical, met, uh, metonymical way of, of uh, approaching those ideas, and there's a um, met metaphoric way of approaching those ideas. So for example, if you were to say... Yeah. Would you just tell us what metonymy is? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so uh, metonymy... Uh, uh, much like um, uh, uh, much like um, uh, sub sublimation. Uh, so, uh, um, so metonymy is basically uh, the way that um, we, uh, in, 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 in any sort of a chain of, of, of signifiers, we have this this these ways of of. Our, of, of having to choose from uh, detours. So for example, we maybe have these uh, different tropes or um, uh, different you know, uh, expressive ma material that gets us going onwards. It doesn't really, uh, you know, uh, whereas metaphor, for example, is a substitution for other signifier, uh, metaphor is, is the sort of the, the way that, that, um, that, that we change things just for the for the sake of, of changing things in, in the story, so to like propel us uh, onwards. So, for example, um, at the, why why did I say that that if, if a person if a kid says that like some sort of a uh, if if a kid comes up with a synonym in relation to uh, for example uh, uh, a chair, that would be a metaphorical way of approaching it. Whereas metonymical way of approaching it would be to create a little storyline. So, for example, with 
maybe it would be that a teacher brought a chair. So that would be the, the uh, sort of the story and the story of um, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the way to propel uh, the, 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 the chair as an object that is, is acting in the story uh, towards, you know, other, other uh, uh, events and, and uh, other, you know, uh, appearances. So... People get that? That's, that's going to be important for next week. Yeah. Um, so, and, and, and so uh, th that's, that's also very. Uh, you talk about also different kinds of art. And um, and 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 for, for example, in, in cubism or, or like uh, in, in, in a fiction or like a book in Anna Karenina, the, these these people are using uh, a sort of a, a metaphorical. You could say metaphorical ways of of. of uh, having a close-up on the on the material that uh, whatever the, the you know maybe the literature or or uh, cubism uh, you know the, the, the whatever the subject matter is so they would make a close-up and get to the like the closest the, the, the closest to the to the to the uh, subject matter that they're they're basically trying to you know to express uh, for example he's also talking about Ch Charlie uh, uh, Charlie Chaplin and uh, and and Eisenstein in the way that they're using uh, a metaphorical uh, mon metaphor in, in, in the montage that they're using. So, uh, uh, we could just go to the second one. And, and so, finally, we're sort of, uh, well, we're, we're approaching the, the, the other article that Jakobsen also was talking about. Uh, uh, that one of the more important articles in his in his uh, legacy is on the lingu linguistics and, and poetics, and um, so he begins by by a really it, 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 for, it begins with a distinction that it's it's believed that um, linguistics it's as for some uh, for some reason it's more of a analytical and therefore more of a uh, legitimate uh, view and sort of approach to, to the language. And, and whereas uh, like a motive and, and poetic language or, or something, or maybe, more importantly, maybe very uh, uh, quotidian language that happens in, in, you know, when we are just trying to uh, chat with people, the sort of like very basic language, superficial language, that is not representative, is not, is not a critical uh, towards itself or the language, the way that it works. And, and we can, we can uh, the next, next slide, I think, yeah, we could, we could talk about this, for example, in Beckett, Samuel, Samuel Beckett, who was, who was, um, who was a, sort of a co colleague of, of uh, James Joyce, uh, uh, they, he, he wrote a, 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 a Godot, uh, the play of Godot, and the, the, if, you, if you look at this, the, the language is absolutely, you know, simple, and it's really, really basic. But what it represents, and the, whatever the, the cap, you know, capacity and poignancy it has, is absolutely, you know, remarkable. And it, it represents the, the, the sort of lack of you know, not, not being able to attain something, waiting for something all the time, and it's just a very tedious existence in, in right now, and how everything is just, 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 just you know, uh, ludicrous in the way that it's absurd and whatever. So that's what it represents. Or, for example, Harms, who was Russian uh, absurdist, um, um, absurdist um, um, poet, also he was. He would, he would talk about like the, the most uh, you know even vulgar stuff and, and, and in, the, in the most simple language ever. But it would have so much uh, poignancy in the way that it was representative of the state in which uh, you're trying to get at these 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 uh, big, big questions, but yet you just have to deal with whatever, you know, uh, quotidian language you have uh, right now. So that's, that's something that uh, Jacobson wants to uh, stress, that, that uh, basic language can always also be representative of the way that the structure of language works. And it all only dif differentiates in the goals that language is trying to get at. That's, that's what we're gonna see later of the remarkable um, job that he does of, of embarking, I, I, don't, I see that we're probably going to be, you know, running out of time. So maybe I should just just try to wrap it up. Okay. So so basically, uh, the the most fun thing about this 
is that he actually tries to uh, come up with all the ways that our language works, basically. So this is, this is amazing, and we, you should try to listen. Uh, you should totally stay and then listen to this. But this is not going to take long. So we, we should take a we should take um we should take a, some sort of a phrase that is stupid. And I was thinking thinking about it that it should be like a very basic and and, and a, a, a truism of sorts. But I chose a phrase that is this is music, and we could go to the, this one. Yeah, um, uh, a phrase that is uh, that is music. So. Uh, he, he's talking about poetics, and poetics basically means, and I'm not going to talk about a lot about poetics, but poetics means that there's a, uh, there's a way in which, in which uh, uh, terms and, and signifiers are different or, uh, or similar to each other. So, for example, if you take writing better lyrics, you could uh, say things like, remember when the days were long and rolled beneath a deep blue sky. There's a reason why these words are together, because there's poetics involved, and there's a similarity and the similarity working together and achieving those. That's poetics. So, and he has six functions of language. I'm going to talk quickly about all of them. Uh, so, basically, uh, let's, let's talk uh, about poetic. Uh, so, if I say this is music and it's a poetic uh, function of language, I say your eyes, your breath is like music to me. Or, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm singing, singing in the rain and, and this is music for me. Or I'm I love you, and your your smile is a, is a, is, a, is a harmonious thing that that is equal to music for for some reason. That's that's the thing that I mean. I'm, I'm a romantic poet. I, 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 I that's that's what I do. So it's sort of a uh, you know it's a poetic. Uh, it's a, it's a it's a, I think it's, I think actually yeah that that was actually a motive a motive way uh, a motive function of language. Uh, cognitive uh, cognitive function of language. Uh, what what Jacobson is talking about here, it's a command. So for example, if you go to a concert and you maybe the cage is performing and you see that it's a, it's a ridiculous and doesn't make any sense, it's just silence and, and, and why would you respect that? So maybe you're making noise and somebody says, this is music and you stop because there's etiquette and you know that it's music, so you're going to stop and actually respect the performance. So that's cognitive function. So then we go to a referential fun function, bring about the knowledge. So for example, there's a, there's a lesson and a, and a music teacher is saying so that, that this, uh, whatever we're doing on, on the wall, we're, we're drawing all these note heads and, uh, and, and uh, whether it's flat or, 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 or uh, you know, this is music. And he's, he's, it's a referential, he's giving you knowledge, he's saying this is music. Uh, phatic, what happens in, with phatic function, we go into, a, for example, elevator, and you, there's a girl that you might like, and there's music playing in the elevator, and, and, and you see, because you're so, so embarrassed, and maybe it's totally awkward, and you, see, and you say, this is music, and there's no reason why you're saying this. Because it's uh, the same thing as, as, saying, as saying, like, oh, the weather is nice. I do that all the time. Whenever I like, sort of annoy by the people, I say, yeah, weather is great today. I mean, uh, yeah. So what, what I'm saying is that I don't really want to, like, Either I don't want to really want to talk to you, in my case, or is that we're just trying to uh, get the connection, that we are in connection with, with each other. And lastly, uh, we have metalingual function. What happens is that we take the, uh, the, the sentence, this is music, and we say, what, so what is this? What is this? This is music. What is the pronoun in relation to music? What is the pronoun that is music? So we become... Uh, literalist, and we, we actually look at the language and, and, and find out the way it works. And so that would be the way, that, for example, maybe in a commentary in, in Facebook happens that people, people are arguing that somebody is not paying attention to literary, uh, literal things in, 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 in language. So when I say this is music, am I explaining this? Where is this? And, what is music in relation to this? So these are all the functions that Jacobson is talking about. And I think it's genius in the way that he's actually embarking on having, uh, or embarking on, on, on creating all of these uh, ideas and concepts and notions towards language. So yeah, here we go. So, uh, that, that was Jacobson. So I think uh, the, what, it, what it basically represents is that you should pay attention to whatever you're saying, because. <laughs> Because it's always, uh, it could be just representative of, of, of anything uh, that you might not wish to be representative of. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, that, that was